Hi, I'm Ramon Mejia from Geek Bites Podcast. Now today, uh, I was definitely lucky enough to talk and interview Al Ron Kong, author of the Chaos Seed series. Now, I gotta say, he it was an absolute joy to talk to. You can tell that during the interview that he's he's a fan of Lord RPG as much as he is a creator uh, of, of, of content for the genre. It was it was great to talk to the guy. I gotta say, I had a great time, and, and you know, I think he did too. Um, now he again is an author of the Chaos Seed series. He has three books out currently. We have The Land Founding, The Land the The Land Forging, and The Land Alliances. Now the f- stories focus on Richard, who's the main character. He is summoned from our world to the land, which is a kind of fantasy world that incorporates. Um, RPG game mechanics where characters can level up, increase their skills, gain magic through practice, become more powerful people in the world, and it actually has a real world effect. And they can see their stats in the window. Super fun genre. One of my favorite series of books in the genre, of course. We talked about a lot more beyond, you know, just light RPG or sort of, um, but this is a great series for you to jump into if you're interested in finding something new and great to read about. I encourage you to, to definitely look at this series on Amazon. You can find, of course, all of Alarong's books on Amazon as ebooks. In the notes, we're going to put links to, of course, uh, his Lit RPG Facebook page that he started, created a community around, uh, his Amazon author page, the AMA that he's currently doing on Reddit, of course, and, of course, our Lit RPG recommendation page at GateMindPodcast.com. Now, go watch the interview, buy his books, and go geek out about Lit RPG. Hey Hello. everyone, uh, I'm Ramon Mejia from Geeks by Co- Podcast. Uh, today we have a special guest with us. He is the highly rated author of the Chaos Seed series, but he's also a, a lifesaver, a heartbreaker, and the don <laughs> of the Miss Village Mafia. Welcome, Alaron Kong. Hey. Thank you. Thanks for having me here, man. Um, now, Alaron, uh, thank you very much for talking with me today. Uh, if you want could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and you know who you are and why you decided to to start writing yeah uh so i live in atlanta i've been here for about 20 years left for college then came back and i what i do for my day job i'm a physician i work for kaiser permanente and basically i've just read sci-fi my entire life always loved it always you know looking for old dragon lance novels at like you know bargain bookstores and stuff like that uh, made this painful switch to Kindle and e-reading a couple of years ago and just started consuming it more and more. And I ran into um, uh, David, or yeah, Jackson's, his uh, Ash character for Lit RPG. And I read it and I was like, oh my God, this is the most amazing thing ever. I can't believe no one else ever thought of this. And then I read more and realized other people actually had thought of it. Um, so I was just trying to like devour as much as I could about six or eight months ago and that was back when there was i don't know maybe a third of the lit rpg out that is now currently available and i read some good stories and honestly i read some that were just kind of crap a little bit and i was like well i can't do any worse than that so i decided just to start writing and it evolved into this like world um that was even a bit of a surprise to me and uh people liked it which was awesome i kind of just thought i'd get like one or two people being like eh all right um and I don't know. It feels like I finally found my passion in life. Honestly, that is absolutely amazing. I I love to see, see when people find something they really love and can geek out about. That's a bit fit for us here on our, on our network and our podcast is just the things you love, the things you geek out about. Express them. Be enthusiastic about it. I'm happy to th- see that you found something. Uh, besides, of course, you know, medicine saving lives. Uh, yeah, writing, that's, that's, uh, that's okay. Well, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Your amazing story <laughs> telling is also great for you. Uh, do you have any particular aspirations for your writing career? Um, honestly, I feel like it is developing into something new. Um, I feel, you know, with the speed that I'm able to put these books out, I kind of feel like where most books in like a series are like, okay, so you saw this movie, then you're going to see the next one a couple of years later, you're going to see the next one. I feel like my writing is more like Scandal or 24. It's like, okay, so you got this hour, and you're like, oh, it's over. Um, but so my, it's just going to kind of be like a sh- one, me to keep having a good time when I'm writing. Two, for it not to become formulaic, 
Like some people complain like, oh, I love this part and not this part. Oh, I love this part of this part of this book. But that's kind of what I wanted. I feel like as long as people are talking about it and discussing it, I'm doing something right. And if people just start going like, oh, that's just the same old shtick, then that's when I need to either write a new story or change something up completely or something like that. Okay, so let me ask you then, how do you, how do you, how do you make your stories different than other light RPG, lit RPG stories or, or, or fantasy in general? Um, I feel like one of the biggest things that separates mine is my use of humor. Um, and it's like some people love it and some people hate it, like all other humor. But I just feel like whatever you're doing in life should be fun and should be something that you can get a little dark with, but you can also like have some gallows humor and then you can also just have, you know, a dick joke thrown in here or there, just anything that's going to like keep it light and fresh. Uh, the other thing is that I feel like my story and character is realistic. I feel like a lot of times it's like, okay, so I'm walking along and I found this key and this is somehow exactly what I need somehow later. With my gentleman, it's like, I know that I want to go from point A to point B, but I've already made rules for my world. So as I'm trying to get there, I'm like, oh, this is actually not going to work out. He's actually going to get the crap kicked out of him this time. That sucks for him. But I stay true to that and it keeps it fresh and exciting even for me. So I suppose those two That's things. Nice. Yeah, I agree. Definitely staying true to a sense of realism, even within like a a gamified kind of role, is really important because it, yeah. if your character suddenly becomes so overpowered, uh, then nothing can stop it. It it feels like a real disconnect uh, in some yeah. kind of storylines. Uh, now, speaking no, of, of the genre, um, lit RPG mm -hmm. is a very new type of genre that sh that isn't really around. Um, it, it's big in other yeah. countries. Can you tell us a little about what? makes a uh, lit RPG unique and what it is to you? Well, I feel like it's an amalgam of what me and other geeks have kind of just always been about, right? Like we love our role playing games. We love sci-fi. We loved uh, world building. If you're into the strategy stuff, like I am like Civ four and, you know, you know, rise age of empires, that kind of stuff. And for it to kind of all just be able to, mesh together and like so like you're not having to be like oh i want to read this book or i want to play this new game or oh it's like you can find it in one place i think is amazing um the best way i've found to describe it to other people is first of all i'm like hey do you know world of warcraft They're like oh yeah everyone's heard of world of warcraft and i'm like well it's like you got drawn into a world like that but for people that are more familiar i'm like okay so no one necessarily thought that watching someone play halo online would be interesting and yet it's, if you're good, it's fascinating. I feel like lit RPG is the same as watching skilled gamers play a game because you can get caught in there and you can feel like you are the person that is leveling up, that is living this life. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree. Um, lit RPG is just this weird intersection between a lot of different um, enthusiast genres like gaming, you have fantasy, mm -hmm. sci-fi, literature, great storytelling, um, and sometimes just fun action stories. And it's it's its yeah. own unique niche to me that that just is, is expanding. Uh, and there's I've been obsessed with this genre for the last eight, nine, ten months. Um, yeah. So much so that a large portion of my my website is just dedicated to the subject at this point. Uh, and yeah, a good portion of my time just reading. That's all I read nowadays. So yeah. um, I. I I hear the enthusiasm for it, and I, and I love to love to hear that kind of stuff. Um, let's talk a little bit about your actual books, though. You have um, okay. three books in your series, the Chaos uh, Seed series. What is the overall story story about? All right, so basically, it starts with a similar arc for a lot of them, where you I have someone that was involved in some sort of complex virtual reality MMORPG. Um, you know, you're set a couple of years in the future because, you know, the tech is not widely available yet. And the person gets drawn into the story. And basically it's like, what happens after that? And obviously the lit RPG kind of paradigm is that as opposed to some other science fiction thing where maybe you learn, I don't know, to cast something from a plucky squirrel or a nice owl or something like that. This is very much like you start as just a regular dude and the more, you strain and the more you uh, stress yourself out, well, the stronger that you can get. And for me particularly, I wanted to get a intersection of, yeah, sort of hardcore um, RPG type of style, but also you're gonna see an explosion of world building and sort of like how he's interacting with various issues. Um, in the upcoming books, you're gonna see like, you know, settlements raiding settlements and 
you know, very complex sort of like, you know, political intrigues, things like that. Um, but also I wanted to keep it um, fresh. One of my favorite authors is Scott Lynch of the Gentleman Bastard series. And he's amazing in that every book he sets as a different tone. So like the first book is just a, you know, a robber baron kind of thing. The next book he's a, is a pirate kind of thing. The next book is about fixing an election, but it also sort of ties together. I love the idea that I don't just have to have the same setting every time, which is one of the reasons that my world, I immediately made it as expansive as it is. It's basically a world the size of Jupiter, but he's only in like, you know, a space the size of Georgia right now. So basically like the opportunities are limitless in the future. Awesome. Um, I, I definitely see that trend that you're talking about. In your very first book, uh, it was just richer, another couple of characters. Uh, they're going on these little adventures. It felt like a very individual story and that as mm-hmm. your books progress you got you, the miss village you had some town building you got some trading between other other cities you got got a slightly larger expansive view of the world uh, mm-hmm. as each book, book progresses you see some of the speciesism i guess uh, between humans yeah. and and non-humans which i i personally yeah. love the fact that this world isn't perfect and that there yeah. are social yeah social justice issues even within this fantasy you know gaming world um and then yeah. in the third book you you're getting to a little more like exploration of like the the larger world how how mechanics and how how there are different species and tribes and conflicts within even mm-hmm. uh, a bigger and bigger world so I'm, I'm i'm really glad to see on a personal level uh the the hope for you know realm versus realm or town versus town kind of kind mm-hmm. of fighting going on get those realm versus realm kind of you see in you know mmos and video games which is yeah. again a, another part of the the, the genre um now exactly. talking about richard for a little bit richard's your main character right yeah now what makes him special why did you how did you make him special to the story so for me uh so there's going to be underlying currents that uh are plot spoilers that sort of move forward at, I don't know, like book 20 or something like that, I suppose, that I'm planning out. But Richter is just a guy that kind of stumbled into the right, you know, series of circumstances. And he's just like, any old American dude who, you know, is just not perfect is going to, you know, try to more or less be a good guy. But at the end of the day, is just trying to like figure out like who he's going to be. And one of the things that is um, exciting for me looking at Richter is that you're taking this gentleman and it's like, just like if, you know, here in real life, if you gave someone control over a island and said, hey, you're in charge of this now, just seeing like, you know, would it corrupt them? Like, what would they do? What is not acceptable to do? Like, do they become power hungry? Do they kind of just become like a glutton and have all the virgins somehow show up? I mean, you kind of just get to see how he's developing. Um, But also that even though he is, growing into power of his own so he's not just like a punk that anyone can push over he's still part of the same he's growing through a system that other people have been around a lot longer than he has so you know he runs into you know characters like in the you know third book that just utterly own him at first but you know it's like how far are you going to push this what is actually going to um make you win and a lot of times He's not winning because he's going head to head. He's winning because he's like, okay, I got to really think this out because these guys are going to kick my ass and I really have to figure out what I'm going to do. And I feel like I like that about him. He also wins because he's been lucky enough to make like the right friends and allies. And I mean, he would just be totally owned without any of that. So I feel like it's more realistic than a lot of the stories that I read where it's like he suddenly is just the baddest guy ever, even though he's been around for, you know, a couple of weeks, but he's a sword master, which... I mean, yeah. So I don't know. I like it. I I I, I like it too, personally. Uh, I I love your <laughs> style. I love the the character art progression, not just his growth as you know that he obviously has a high high luck stat, obviously, to, to connect with all the other great characters. But you never made him overpowered. Um, you start him mm-hmm. off on the archery path, and then he kind progresses into some, the sword path, as anyone would. Yeah. Nobody really knows that. Yeah. If you're transported to another world. You wouldn't really know what's going to work for you the best. And I like the fact that you're exactly. in your writing style, you didn't necessarily have his entire um, character progression path plotted out in detail. Like he can switch from one thing to another. Maybe he's emphasizing mm-hmm. magic now because it just works better for his talent. He can't be, you know, a master of all skills. So he's kind of focusing on on things that he can and it, and working in the and that's not something he would have known in book one necessarily. 
Um, yeah. So as, as detailed as, as your stories are, do you do any research uh, in, 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 in I do your books? so much research, so much research about the most random things. I went to a Renaissance festival just so I could talk to a blacksmith this weekend, just so I could be like, okay, so what are like sort of the real world things? Because for me, it's very much like if I'm going to have someone wearing leather armor of something, then they need to have, you know, the appropriate things. And so it's everything from like, if they're going to start making it more then the people are going to start complaining about the smell. And if there's not a water source nearby, then their health is going to start going down. I really wanted it to be a fantasy world that is still bound by, you know, real world commonalities. Um, I've, you know, done research on physics is I've made like, you know, little sample catapults in my house to sort of see like how that would shake out. And it's like, how do you get them to the feral forest? And, you know, then you have to cut them down. And I've researched how long it takes to cut down and strip and treat something so that if you put the torque forces on it, would it work? I mean, yeah, I, I look, that's one of the things that takes me a long time. Like I'm researching every little thing and trying to make it as in keeping with reality as possible. Um, because I think like, you know, anyone else that sort of loves these kind of games, we love geeking out and just like poking at it a thousand times. And I think one of my the favorite things for my fans is like if they can catch an inconsistency in my book, they're like, hey, hey, everyone, Aleron, Aleron fucked up. Check this out. And everyone, I'm like, all right, you know, you got me, guys. I, I, I missed that one. You're right. So Yeah, like they, the, the fans will always find the, the little things you missed. Uh, saw that yeah. prep work it really pays off. Uh, fans pointed out a lot of things that you missed. So there have been two. So there have been two things that I missed. One is that he found a metal elementum, and I had already written that um, one of his doors was made of elementum, and they landed on me like a sumo wrestler for that one. And then something that actually someone just noticed, which I actually think is funny, and I think it's going to be—I'm going to work into the story. And I think it's going to be great. Is that he got trapped underground and had to figure out how to see. And they're like, yeah, so he totally just found something that would have let him see underground. And it's like, yeah, he did, didn't he? Totally forgot that I had put that into the story. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I'm going to work it in. And, like, he's going to be talking to his people. And they're going to be like, so you realize this did that thing that whole time. And he's like, all right, let's not tell anyone that that happened. That's super embarrassing. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's – Representing your writing, those, those same moments, like, oh, yeah, I yeah. kind of forgot about that thing I found before. Huh. Oh, well. Yeah. No, there was a big um, argument on the forums about how he levels up his uh, his familiar. And it's like people were going back and forth for like three days arguing about it. And they didn't agree with how I was uh, doing it. And so like, you know, in the next book, I was like, he, Al, Richter was just so happy that he leveled up his familiar. It was like He just couldn't stress enough exactly how serious and perfect he thought what he had done. And if anyone disagreed with him, they were just insane. And a lot of the fans, like, you know, sort of, like, like that, and they poked back afterwards. And I feel like that's one of the other things that separates my story is that I'm, I like to be very in touch with the people that are reading the story because I feel like we're all the same. We wanted a story like this. We love that we found it. Just like you, I have a hard time reading even some of my old favorite authors that are not in this because it's, it's, like, it's not as exciting. It's not as engaging. It's a little bit more drawn out. Um, yeah, I'm like, where's, where's the status screen? Yeah, where is, what's going on? Why, okay, so you fought someone, but nothing different? Okay, this is boring. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Awesome. Um, but man, all this seems like it takes such a long time to write. Um, I, I think for any, anyone who's ever thought about writing a novel, it seems like such, mm -hmm. such a daunting task. How, how did you, how did you finally decide to like sit down and write something? What, what What's your process? So, um, you know, there's that old like movie, uh, Finding Forrester with Sean Connery. And, you know, there's that line where he's like, you know, the first step in writing is just to write. And so I just started writing one day. I was bored. Um, I had just been spent like a day cursing because I couldn't find any new lit RPG. And I was like, ah, oh, what the hell? And I had tried reading one or two stories. And I'm like, this is just unreadable. I can't, I can't do this. Um, and because of that, because I was inspired by certain authors and because I was just sort of like completely underwhelmed by authors, I very much was like, well, what do I have to lose? What's what's the worst that can happen? And this was before I even knew that you could, an indie author could just publish on Amazon. I had no idea how I was going to do it. But I was like, I've always kind of wanted to do this. This is, I've been looking for something to, that I could um, pour my energy and like, you know, fuel into. Because I'd been in training for medicine for a decade. And that's basically all I did. I worked, you know, 16 to 
20 hours a day for three years. I mean, that's just all I did. And now that I was done and I had time, I was like, okay, let's try this. So I sat down and I just started writing. And honestly, for the first like week or two, I didn't tell anyone about it. And I would just like think about stuff and play old games. I'm like, oh, you know, it would be fire. Oh my God, I'm going to go back. And I would totally rework what I had done. And I had an idea that I wanted magic and progression to be reasonable. And I wanted it to be as real towards life as possible. And, you know, I feel like some people are born and they can be great at the piano. And some people are born and like maybe if they work really hard, they can kind of learn. And some people are just never going to get it. And that idea is what led me to my affinities and sort of skill system where certain people are born with a predisposition to certain things and they'll learn it faster than other people. And that's, that's how they determine how good they can be. Um, and so once I had that basic system, I also started, you know, writing very specific things about like, I've got like a thousand reference documents now about exactly how enchanting works, exactly how sword fighting works, exactly how, you know, X, Y, and Z works. Um, and so as I finished the first book and when I started writing the second book and I was like, oh, this would actually make a little bit more sense. And I could like sort of just get a very firm framework for the rules of my world. It's coming easier now because it's like, I know I want to go from point A to point B, but I'm like, okay, well, let's just operate within the rules of the world and make it exciting. And so now there's less wondering, but there's a lot more like I have to check my references like, okay, so exactly how long did the spell take to cast? Exactly how long did whatever? Um, so, I mean, that's, that's basically it. It kind of organically is growing out of me um, more than anything else. Yeah, so it's and it sounds like you're, so you're the type of writer who, who has like an outline for four or five books in advance or, or are you just writing as you go and whatever happens, happens? I have an outline for like 40 books in advance. But what I found is that when I wrote book one, I thought that by book three, I would be from here to here. But I'm now at book four, I'm like from here to like here. Because the story is just getting so much more expansive. Even though I was planning to go here, it's like it's leading me in various places. And so it's still within the same framework. Like I have a very clear idea about exactly how things are going to shake out but it's just taking a lot more time to like, describe it than i thought it was going to no, i think that's great i mean uh that the true characters feel so real and fleshed out to you that they're almost taking on a life from their own saying you know what no we're not going to go on this adventure quite yet this path that you've planned out for us quite yet uh we want to do yeah. this other thing first i think that's really cool and that it, it, it makes your characters feel more more real and that they have almost their own agenda in your story when you're writing them. Yeah, uh, I mean, they very much do. There's times where I try to get Richter to convince people of something and they, I'm just like, but they disagree with him. And I'm like, I didn't really expect you guys to disagree with him, but I guess it makes a little bit more sense. Um, and that's, you know, that's sort of just how it all shakes out. Um, and then like in this latest book, he's getting like super paranoid about stuff and everyone's like, dude, and he's like, no, dude, no. It's exactly the way it's going to go. And so I'm not exactly sure how his more kind of totalitarian tight fisted thing is going to work, but it does feel like what would happen to him after he's been through certain things. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, um, on that particular point, I almost feels all like what happened in the walking dead with uh, Rick, the Rick, 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 mm -hmm. Rick, 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 And this is the richer yeah. at this point. Uh, just, just yeah. because of that paranoid issue of like bad things happen when I don't ha have full control. And, you know, Richard is, is having the same thing. It seems like, uh, can you tell me a little bit about what, what do you find to be the, the hardest and easiest things about the writing process for you? So the, I think the hardest thing is staying true to my vision of what I want the story to be, but also being attentive to my fans and like sort of, what they're looking for because uh i've always been a very independent person and kind of just was like ah you know you like it you like it if you don't you don't but this almost feels like my child more than anything else so when i you know get a review one way i really just try to like read it read it and see what's going on and um after the third book that has kind of faded back a lot because it, i now feel like i like i wrote the first book i'm like okay well that went okay i guess i did that 
And then I wrote the second book, and I was like, okay, so I did it twice. Is this maybe a thing? I don't know. You know, God, I mean, they could just really tear me up, the third one. Mm -hmm. But by the time I wrote the third one, I'm kind of just like, all right, this is what I do. And if you love it, you love it. If you don't, you're a horrible person, basically. No, you're um, you're not a horrible person. But you know, I, I yeah, basically man, feel like it this feels is like what it's a I real do. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was hard for me to sort of navigate that back and forth. Um, the hardest technical thing is the proofreading. I hate the proofreading. It feels like homework. Yeah. It's like the yeah. worst part. Um, you know, it's like it's so irritating. Yeah, but now I've got um, two really great beta readers, uh, so they're helping out with a lot of. And actually, I have some awesome fans that you know, in and of themselves, will like read the book in ten hours, and then twelve hours up to that, they're like, "Hey, this is some stuff that I caught. Keep up the good work." Da da da. And it's like that means the world. So you want to give a shout out to anybody real quick? Uh, so Justin Johansson, Peter Morena, um, uh, Azrael Mega. Uh, I don't remember what his real name is, but. And then um, Bibliophile, he's really gotten some great uh, info as well. And then there's a lot of people that have just been like loyal from Jump. I mean, they're they're awesome. So that, that's great. I, I I like the fact that you're including your audience so much in your writing process, and not just as beta readers, but also grabbing ideas from them. You know, taking the points that they say are, are kind of iffy and working them into the story. I I, I love how involved your community. Um, and, and the little RPG community is, it is in your story. Um, yeah. and now, now writing to me is kind of a, a, a creative process where you're, you're outputting so much great stuff. Um, uh, but when you output so much great stuff, you got to refill the tank sometimes, man. Uh, who are some of the authors that you love to read that really f refill that creative juices on your end? So I will say that the biggest difference probably in, having started writing is that my reading intake has gone from like a hundred to like one. It really has. Um, there are authors that I used to like, you know, just want to like read or you know, read them over and over again. And it's like, I'm writing all day, every day. So I'll like try to read it as like, I'm going to sleep and I like just kind of like pass out. And I've started maybe, I don't know, five books over the past six months and gotten like, two or three chapters in. Um, my creative stuff is more, I usually like will sit with my laptop on my lap and behind me, like I'm watching like Aliens 2 or I'm watching like, you know, um, Evil Dead 3 or something like that. Or I'm watching all season five of Stargate SG-1 or something like that. And it, there's a lot of things that will sort of fuel it. Like I actually just watched The Count of Monte Cristo and I spent three days writing like a plot arc that's going to come up maybe, I don't know, like five books from now. But I was just so enthralled with this idea of like anger and hatred and what it does to you and whether it's worthwhile. that I just, I couldn't, my fingers couldn't stop flying for however long. Um, but I actually, after the third book, for the first time in six months, I didn't write for two days in a row. And that actually just kind of let me like, read whatever. I had a lot of friends come to town. We just went out, got some drinks, hung out, and I just consciously didn't touch the keys. Um, it was almost like my fingers were like itching to like tight, but you know, it, it definitely did recharge everything. Yeah. That's good. I mean, everybody needs a chance to recharge. I'm glad to see that you're, you're, I mean, six months daily writing. That's, that's an amazing pace. I got to say, I don't, I can't think of anything I've done except eat and breathe for the last six months every single day. So that's, yeah. that's that, that, I, hey, good for you. You got to say, no, I mean, honestly, it, because because it's my passion. I always hated that question. Like, what's your passion? I'm like, I don't know. What's your passion? Get off my back. Um, I never got it. And so I finally got that, like, I love doing this. So. Yeah, yeah. And and um, I hear you. Uh, I, I feel the same way doing this kind of stuff. It's, yeah, yeah there's some technical work you got to do with it. Yeah, it yeah. can be kind of a hassle sometimes. But yeah. there's just some weird satisfaction of, of being creative and just having an opinion out there that that you created from mm -hmm. almost nothing that, that's just so satisfying that yeah. it's really hard to express and so i i like that man it is i think that's exactly the word creation i mean like every religion like they, that's the number one thing focuses on creation in my stories the ultimate power creation it's the fact the act of creating fulfills something in us i think as just people and yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Now, um, um, just from my, one of my own questions is um, the, 
mm-hmm. the title's called Chaos Seeds, right? So far, we've only seen yeah. one Chaos Seed. Okay, so the, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because people are like, all right, so where the hell are the other seeds? Okay, so imagine that the world was only the size of the United States, right? And imagine that you were plunking five million people down somewhere in the United States. You arguably might not run into any one of those people for a long time if they're randomly just put somewhere. So it's not unheard of that they haven't run into any other chaos seeds yet. There will I, be other chaos seeds coming in, okay. but this is a world the size of Jupiter. Yeah, okay. But yeah, people have definitely been looking for the other seeds. Yeah, okay. So we will at some point see some more chaos seeds. We'll see some other yeah. characters that uh, mm-hmm. that are you know, have some other communities, hopefully. Uh, so yeah. I'm, I'm glad to hear that we'll see some other people at some point. Not that uh, no, you, you I don't like it here now. Yeah, no, you definitely are. But also, I think that people um, are not necessarily looking at the chronological timeline of how long he's been there. Like, so from book one to book three, I think like three months have elapsed. That's that's oh. it. You know, and it's like a lot has happened in a very short period of time. But like, I've actually had to like do the calendar myself where I plotted out like day one, like of, all the way through. And literally, it's, it's definitely been less than four months. So, yeah, so, uh, so you see, in my mind, I always feel like it's, it's been like a year at least where he's been yeah, in this I world know. and he's been doing these things. But you're right, I guess within the world itself, it's only been a couple months. That, and it would be unreasonable for us to to expect that we would run into other chaos seeds in that short of a time yeah. in that, you know, small geographical area. Yeah. Um, I mean, and that's the other thing, too. That's why one of the things that's different is that I. So, I mean, like, everyone loves Game of Thrones. It's a big whatever. Not everyone has read all the books, but, you know, I did. And it's like, but I gave up after, like, the fourth book because I'm like, okay, so I've read, like, a thousand pages, and you've only talked about half the characters. I, I can't deal with this anymore. Like, this series will very much stay focused on Richter and who he is associating with around him. Um, and, like, there's not going to – and there's going to – see him and his people and whatever. And then maybe like, you know, there was a paragraph in the second one where it talked about just science thing. Cause that was, but they were still together. Um, yeah. So that's what's, that's what it's going to be. Okay. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much for answering that. I, I love the fact that, you know, you're willing to do so. Um, now talking about a little bit on some of the more technical aspects of, of, of publishing and writing, you, mm-hmm. you wrote it yourself. A lot of people, can can do that themselves uh, uh, you're also i think self-publishing though through amazon how does that work out for yes you? so that is actually like the most painless process that there is um like in 2010 apparently amazon just wanted more indie writers and so they were like hey upload a manuscript if it's anything kind of anything then you can put it up there and the way it works is that um for every sale in most countries it's like they get 30 percent and i get 70 percent. and there's a couple like places where I get 35% and they, I don't know, the rest goes somewhere else. Um, but that's it. And then the other way that I'm able to distribute is through the Kindle Unlimited where um, authors are paid um, like a percentage of a penny for every page that's read. Um, and so like that was like super, super painless. Um, they're actually like, you know, they employ, I don't know how many thousands of people because they're like quick as bunnies to respond to things. The only thing that's been difficult is figuring out some of the more technical stuff, like the formatting and things like that. Um, you have to sort of like, there's things that I've learned that work for newer generation Kindles or iPads or for other. Oh yeah. Too light or um, those are the kind of things that you just kind of have to like those issues or yourself. Uh, Cause there are services that will do it, but you know, they might do a you know crappy job. So yeah. yeah and they'll still take their cut even if it's a crappy job. Yeah. So and I, still, I mean, they don't, yeah. Have you ever thought about doing the traditional publishing route? Um, so I've actually, I'm a part of a group on Facebook, Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America or something like that. There's like 7,000 people. And I started a topic thread like, what's the point of being published these days? And if you are a James Patterson or a J.K. Rawlings, well, the point is that they'll give you a castle and a pony and, you know, that's amazing. But if you're like an indie writer, um, there really doesn't seem to be much point anymore because you're giving someone a percentage of your profits and more importantly, you're giving someone the ability to dictate how your story should progress. Mm-hmm. Um, which, you know, I just find abhorrent. Like, absolutely. Um, I think that if I found the right 
you know, editor or whatever, someone that like loved the genre, then maybe that would be a nice collaboration. They could get me to higher heights. But other than that, I feel like most of them are just trying to, you know, they're, they're business people. They're not yeah. book people necessarily. Um, so I haven't really found a reason. I mean, it would have been nicer to have someone be able to help me with the formatting. It would have been nicer to have someone help me with my website, which, you know, is only now getting up hopefully in the next week after I've been writing for six months. It, um, so like you have to kind of do a lot of the stuff yourself, but I think that's like a fair trade off if you really love what you're doing. Um, but I will say that I've also been on a bunch of writers forums and I think that there's a very big difference between myself being able to write just because I love it. And it's like, this is what I do for fun and da da da. And someone that's like writing for their daily bread because the anger and vitriol and angst and whatever is just, I'm just like, Oh, this is depressing. God. Um, it's like that the first scene in limitless where he's just this like kind of like crackhead guy looking around. He's like, but I'm not a crackhead. I'm a writer. Um, yeah, that, that doesn't seem super fun, but yeah, that, for me, I'm, yeah, yeah, it's well. it was, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's it. So maybe one day if I learn more about it, but like I've had, I've been approached for people trying to buy my audio rights and things like that. And again, it just doesn't really seem like something that I'd be interested in doing. Um, but there's a lot that I don't know about the business side of booking. Like, honestly, I'm, I'm a writer. I'm not a, a book mm -hmm. editor. Um, so I'm sure there's a lot more I need to learn about it. Okay. So this seems like it's the easiest path for, for a lot of an independent writers. Just, I mean, the process you did her up seems almost painless compared to the, uh, the, the traditional publishing where you, you know, you send your manuscripts for his publisher as, and if they like them, then they'll yeah. give you some support and some marketing. Uh, but if sales aren't good enough, then they're going to drop you suddenly and there go your royalties or your advance to keep you going. Um, that process yeah. always seemed to me a little more, a little more difficult, even though there is a support system there for people who need it. If you don't, why bother? You know, I have definitely run into that because I was in collaboration with one of the major uh, Russian writers. Um, and he and I were like, Hey, we love each other's books. We were going to, represent each other and you know so and I got into it with his his editor in a not super polite kind of way and so suddenly it's like you know our parents wouldn't let us play together anymore and that was the end of that <laughs> and that sucked but it was the way it was yeah and and I mean that's that's sometimes that, that's the business aspect of writing it's not all creative you know some yeah. people depend on this for their living and and I know I get that uh, I'm, I'm happy to see that you, you have a little more freedom in your writing style and the things that you can do. Uh, I think it makes for better stories when you don't have quite as many restrictions on, on what you can and can't say and how you can say it and, you know, all the publishing stuff. So I, 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 I'm glad that you chose this round in particular. Um, now, being on Amazon, though, it seems a little mm -hmm. it would seem to me as if it's a little more difficult to, to get your book out there. Do you find that to be the case? I do. Um, I think it's definitely grown organically. I think that the lit RPG group on Facebook has been huge for a lot of people in lit RPG trying to come out. Um, it's also been great for us weeding out people that are like, Hey, my book's lit RPG. And you're like, no, you're just jumping on. You have nothing to do with us. Um, and the people on the, you know, the group, I mean, they will tear you up if they don't like what you're doing and they'll sing your praises if you do. Um, so I think that that's been very helpful. Um, as far as like only being on Amazon, which is what I have to do if I want to do the Kindle Unlimited thing, it's an yeah. exclusive kind of deal. Um, I mean, there are other book things. I mean, there's Barnes and Noble and there's Smashwords. And honestly, I just haven't really learned that much about it either. But it's one of those things where if I had a dedicated editor, they're like, okay, well, look at this statistic and look at this. I'd be like, okay, maybe we'll do X, Y, or Z. But for me, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm putting a book out that people like. Um, I only started six months ago. And yet, you know, I feel like I'm becoming a a recognized name in the genre. Like a couple of my fans are like, Oh yeah, you're the father of lit RPG. And I'm like, Oh, don't tell Brent Roth about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> <but> <laughs> um, uh, so, I mean, it is a little difficult, um, but you know, it kind of just depends on like how much you care about it. Um, like me personally, I'm going to start trying to enter some of my works in literary competitions. Now that I have a little bit more time, um, mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's just a newsletter or two that's gone out about me to like just sort of local whatevers. And I mean, that's it. And basically I'm, for me, I'm trying to just engage different forums. So the different social media forums, but also, um, my, one of my newest projects is that 
commissioning comic books to be written. So those are going to be the side stories for, those are going to be the stories for like major side characters. So, you know, like Tarad will have a seven comic book art dealing with like, you know, his upbringing. And there's one or two other characters that have like, you know, big backstories that are coming up that as opposed to just writing an anthology where you're reading through stuff again, it's like you get to actually see the characters doing whatever. And then it will end with when they meet Richter. Okay, so. that's interesting. Uh, I, I did notice that you were, were talking about publishing. Is this going to be a webcomic? So, yeah, it is going to be a webcomic, um, just like, you know, my books are ebooks. And But, again, that's the kind of thing where I don't know what pe- where the market is going to be able to match. Because mm-hmm. where unlike my ebooks where it's just me with WordPerfect typing and that's that's it. With this, I'm having to, like, engage an artist. I found this excellent guy in Spain. Um, where we're like, you know, contacting one another pretty frequently, but you know, it's like, I have to put a certain amount of overhead into it and I don't want to charge my fans so much that they're not, um, you know, feeling comfortable with it. But Amazon has a weird rule that every book they sell needs to be between two ninety nine and nine ninety nine. Otherwise the author only gets 30% of the sales. Um, that's, that's, that's an interesting choice on their part. Um, I yeah, guess so it's like if I wanted point to point market point. dollar. I couldn't do that realistically. Okay. Yeah. So that, that is interesting. I guess from their technical point of view, they have all the numbers that say, oh, this price range works yeah. out best for us and the authors. So I guess there's probably that, but uh, the, the webcomic thing, I think it's very unique for, uh, if you're the only author in, in the Little Upper community that I've seen um, specifically do both a written novel and a webcomic at the same time, how did you decide to, to go with the webcomic? Because, um, again, I like comic books and I was like, yo, this would be great. Let's do this. And I was just like, let's, let's give it a shot. Um, so I'm hoping that it will work out well. I'm actually thinking that a way to kind of stream like that would be, I would just advertise the comics at the end of each book, but I can mm-hmm. sell them directly from my website and then I could do it for a dollar each, you know, yeah, easy, yeah, that's, easy. that's absolutely. Yeah, if you have a, a marketplace to distribute your stuff, yeah. you have your website to advertise not only your normal novels and books, but also your own merchandising. Um, I think I've seen yeah. your, your T-shirt as well. So adding another yeah, comic series would yeah. work out. No, I have a I have a plan. So with the website, I have like I think bigger eyes than you know my stomach. But what I would love to do is just do something fun where like you know people are will be able to log in through their phones. But everyone that takes a picture of themselves in the shirt and puts it on their um, page will get into the mafia, and then they can like compete with each other, like just playing like old school Tetris or something like head to head. And you know that would just sort of like be a fun thing for people to start doing as well. But yeah, I'm trying to just basically branch out into the various things. The t-shirts will be up, and the comic books hopefully soon, and the website hopefully soon. All right, perfect. I, I love up again. I think one of the biggest draws for your your books in particular, the fact that you have a community, uh, you've already tapped into the social media communities for lit RPG and for your own stuff. And it's all coming together. I think really well for you. I'm, I'm really happy for you, man. Um, before you finish up today, uh, how can listeners or readers come, come and find your work? Um, so I am the only Alaron Kong on Amazon. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, but what I would really recommend that anyone that kind of starts to love this is to just join the lit RPG page. There are 575 of us as of this morning, we have had countless threads about various things It's like within the first five minutes of a new lit RPG book coming up, like someone's posted about it on the page. Um, and I think that that would be the best thing. And then I feel like, like I said, I feel like my voice is becoming a strong voice in the community, but there's also just like a lot of amazing other authors too that I would recommend to them. Awesome. And again, you have that nice list on the Facebook Lit RPG page. Uh, that mm-hmm. does everybody that, that, that we've been talking about, a lot of other authors, a lot of recommendations. We have our own recommendation page on our website where we try to post everybody we think is great and kind of exclude all those people who aren't really yeah. Light RPG, yeah. but they show up on the Amazon page yeah. anyways. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I definitely appreciate you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule talking to me. I know, I think we've gone a little longer than the, you know, 10, 15 minutes we had planned I had for. I a great but, time. You know, that's a great conversation for you. So I, I love it. Thank you very much for showing up. All right. Thanks, man. I appreciate you having me. You have a good day. Okay, man. You too, man. I'll talk to you later. Bye.